Today on Nation, we're talking about how debt in business is different than residential. Even if you have no debt to your name, find out if there are benefits at all to going into debt for your business right now on WCR Nation. What's up everybody? Jersey here from WCR and you are here. What's going on? I really appreciate you taking the time to stop and check us out. If it is your first time, have a look around. Hopefully this episode doesn't suck and you want to go back and watch everything. Binge away, my friend. It's totally cool with me. We're into uh, over 110 episodes now, all 30 minutes long. It's been going on now straight for over two years. You have lots to catch up on, so go and do that. Uh, this is available anywhere podcasts are, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play. And of course, it's also available on YouTube if you feel like watching or putting it in the background, whatever you want to do. But that's where the conversation is. And if you're on YouTube right now, please do me a huge favor and click that thumbs up button. It helps me immensely. And make sure to comment. We want lots of engagement and help other people find the show. Uh, like I said before, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. So check it out for window cleaning and pressure washing equipment. And if you need anything, you want to be one of the cool kids, one of the elite, somebody who buys all their supplies through me, well, then I can just go out and buy some brand name stuff with it. So I very much appreciate it. My number directs 862-312-2026. That is a sell. So call me, text me. I get a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of people, by the way, virtual high fives to all of you, uh, that just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Put it in. Cost you nothing extra and I get credit for it and that's how I make my cheddar. So thank you very, very much. Uh, but some shout outs for this week. We're talking, uh, I'm going to say hey to Kyle Esser. What's going on, man? Uh, Chris Simmons, Aaron Rudy, and Ronnie Lopez. What's up, Ronnie? Uh, what's going on to all you guys? I uh, try to give shout outs and pick a couple random names from everybody who uh, buys direct from me and is one of my clients. And just to say thanks. Uh, what's up to all of you? I hope you're all going to the convention. Also, if you're going to see me there, there is going to be a contest where you can take a picture with me, post it, hashtag WCR Nation, and be entered into an awesome drawing. And we'll talk more about that later. And also, last thing I have to talk about is if you want to go and give us a review, please do that. It's windowcleaner.com forward slash review. If you put a review on Google and put my name on there, uh, another contest that we're doing in-house that I can just win. So thank you very much in advance for that. But today we're talking about going into debt for business. Now it's totally different, totally different than going out there and buying a TV and a credit card or fast food or anything. And today I have with me, Mr. Adam Schrader from Level Up Finance. What's going on, man? Not much, brother. What's up, nation? Thanks for having me here, Josh. Yeah, man. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Now, if people don't know you, you are our finance guy. Like, uh, if anybody ever wants to do finance, they have questions about it, they want to know the ins and outs, we have them connect with you. This is the Adam that we always talk about. Um, you're, uh, you're infamous in your knowledge in finance. Appreciate that, man. I, I'm always a little nervous on these things because I've always said I got the radio face. You yeah. Know? So, there's <laughs> that thing. But, uh, yeah, no, I... Probably half of you have talked to me at some point, you know, uh, one point or another. And uh, I, I just awesome, awesome position to be in helping business owners get started, expanding. It's a lot of fun and great group of folks to work with. So always a good time, man. You know, what's really cool, too, is I get a lot of people who will just want to know questions. They just want to kind of ask questions. And that's one thing that you're really, really good at is answering questions without being salesy. Like, I mean, if anybody has ever talked to me, that's one thing I strive on is I don't want to be salesy. I want to tell you everything you need to know. You make the decision and I make it happen. That's kind of the same thing with you is that if people just kind of want to know how it works, that's why we're doing this right now, but they can always call you. They can always do that right there on the Level Up app, right on our website. I mean, there's a lot of cool kind of benefits to that. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's, I appreciate you noticing that because that's, um, this, the, the world of commercial finance, I mean, you know, and Josh, you've heard me say this before. I'm an MBA in finance. I was a wealth advisor. I've been in consumer finance. And when I started in this industry, man, I was lost. It, it's a different, different world. And at the end of the day, 
there's a lot of things we learn as business owners, you know, a lot of things that we didn't think we'd ever have to learn and stuff like that. And it, that's really what it's about. It's, it's putting the cards on the table and giving you the information, giving you the bullets in your gun to hit the target, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, if, if, if someone does business with me because of it, awesome. But if they make the better decision and grow their business and that doesn't involve doing business with me, awesome. It's yeah. great because we, we all win. Yeah. The thing with finances is almost a dirty word too, especially debt. Right. There's a lot of stuff out there where people start businesses on cash, which is cool. Everybody to the kind of their own. Uh, but what people don't know is there is a difference. And on our end, it's not like car dealers where they make more if they try to push you to find it. That's never going to be what it is. We try to find the best solution for you. If you got a credit card and you want to spend that, you don't need the tax benefits. That's fine. If you need to lend, we have those options also. But a lot of people just think of it as like, you know, oh man, if I buy a TV, I'm going to pay, you know, twice as much for the TV. But they don't realize that a TV doesn't make the money. That's not equipment. A TV just sits there on a shelf and collects dust. TV sits on the wall. Yeah, that's the, that's, and, and a guy I respect and, and admire, Dave Ramsey, right? He's taught us that. And that's the consumer mind frame, which is smart. I, I agree with it 100%. Anything in your life, consumer-wise, TV is a great example. Even a car, even a house. If you can pay cash for that, well, maybe not the house. There's some tax benefits <laughs> there. But if you could pay cash for something that's not generating revenue, do it. Um, on the revenue generation side, we, 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 we say debt for business, but we don't think about it like that. We shouldn't think about it like that. We should think about it as operating expense for business. You know, it's this piece of equipment or this tool or this, whatever it is, is what allows you to go out and earn revenue and put food on the table. Yeah. And the difference between getting the one that does the job correctly and that your customers see and makes you look professional and the little thing that you got from the local hardware store or, you know, local Sam's Club or whatever the case may be, people see that. And that's the longevity side of it. You know, I mean, do it right. Don't consider it, oh, it's, it's, it's debt because it, it's an operating expense. Yeah, That's what it needs capital. to be. Yeah. Working, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, capital, I mean, let's talk about cash. How important is that, Josh, when you were starting your first business ever? What was the most important commodity you had other oh. than your time? Liquidity, liquid cash, man. It's, especially in our business, we're squirrels. When we, we have to make it when we can for the times that we don't. You know, yeah. getting rid of cash especially – pre-spring, pre-fall, where you know all the money's coming in, you got all this work that's gonna be lined up, but it's just not the time now that you can drop thousands of dollars on equipment. It's, it's, it's hard for a lot of people. That's why we do so much financing, is that there's just a lot of people out there who know that you need equipment to get jobs done and may not have the cheddar to kind of do it. And, and it is, it's, you know, if you look at some of the largest companies on the planet, they run with debt. They just do working capital. They have awesome. in their cash reserves, but they don't have that. They also have, there's, there's a lot of, of, of kind of benefits to that side of it. And that's one thing kind of, I want to talk a little bit about too. So if you're listening and you're like, man, I'm always cash, you know, I'm going to wait till the time. What you don't know is that there's actually tax benefits to cash in a business. This is commercial leasing, which is much different than consumer lending. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, tax benefits is, is a major, major aspect of it. And it differs uh, federally. It's pretty much the same for anybody in the country. You know, there's some called Section 179, and it's a, uh, uh, that's the tax code that, that governs how you write it off. And the specific ways it, it's qualified for, you know, consumer doesn't qualify you for it in total. There's some things and it's pennies on the dollar type stuff. And so you've just, You've, you've got to be cognizant of that. And again, it's just another thing that we need to know as business owners to make the best decision. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the tax side of things is, is monstrous. Um, and to your point, these huge companies, they, a lot of them have plenty of cash and liquidity on hand, but they finance through commercial finance in order to generate uh, a tax credit because with what they end up paying because they've established their commercial credit, what they end up paying for the entire amount, they'll get more money in tax credit back than they actually pay in finance costs to a bank. Yeah. And there's, there's ways for even, there's ways for even the little guy to do that. You know, yeah. it just, but it all comes back to cash flow. That's, yeah. that's thing. That's the biggest thing in a business. 
It's like if you've ever heard that it's not always super beneficial to pay your house off. Right. You know, it's because there's certain things that come with uh, having money invested in a house that is uh, with a bank or institution that tax benefit. And I'm, listen, like I always say, I'm just some dude with a mic. I'm not a tax advisor. So please do talk to a tax guy about everything that we're talking about. But there are some major, major benefits uh, that you don't really think about. Uh, running kind of getting the equipment. I mean, how much can a piece of equipment make you in a month? It can more than make you what the equipment costs in a month's time, much less over, uh, you know, a year say. So getting the equipment now, as opposed to a year from now helps you kind of get that. But any way you guys do it out there is completely correct. There's no real wrong way to do it, obviously, but there's certain things to think about. And, you know, in your line of business, what's like the biggest kind of objections or misconceptions about the industry that you, you kind of see? Um, you know, expense, uh, honestly, because the, the, uh, the, the primary focus of what we do is generally people with orders under $25,000, you know, and in that, in that playing field, there's, um, in order for the banks to be profitable, there's, there's some significant cost on the finance cost side. And so that leads to sticker shock, especially because we're conditioned as consumers. I mean, think about the last four uh, car ads you saw on TV or, you know, on the internet or whatever. What did they say? They said 0.99 APR. And then I had a little asterisk and a bunch of stuff beneath it because the bank's always making money guys, period. Yeah. It doesn't matter. 0% interest. Bank's always making money. <laughs> that's just the way it goes. So, but we get that sticker shock, you know, and they'll be like, well, it's, it's, what's, what's the rate? Well, with, with what I do, there's not, a, it's not mathematically honest to calculate an interest rate on a lease because it's just the way the math works. You call it finance costs or finance charges. So they'll get sticker shock like, with, oh my God, it's this. When we talk about, um, when we talk about the uh, tax benefit, that's one thing that, you know, goes against the, 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 the sticker shock, you know, and it, and it adds to it. So you've got to take the whole picture into it. And I think the biggest thing, the biggest answer to that is opportunity cost. You know, um, one thing I'll say to clients from time to time is, you know, just to use like window cleaning or pressure washing in this example, I don't think you've ever had a customer and I'm sure people have, but I bet it's pretty rare object by saying, no, you're making too much. They may object that the price is too high. That happens to us, right? But they never object by saying you are making too much. And so I try to get people in that mind frame. Don't worry about what the bank's making. Worry about what your revenue metrics are, your projections and things of that nature. And really focus in on the opportunity cost of um, the lower payment. And think about it like this. If you have a $500 monthly payment, or you have the option to do a $300 monthly payment, but that $300 monthly payment is going to cost you more because it's a longer term. As a consumer, we're going to say, well, I want the 500. I want the, I want the less expensive one. As a business owner, I would say that's $200 in extra cash flow. And let's say I'm a small market um, service industry. What would $200 of Facebook ads bring me in business? A month? Yeah. So I do that same spend, but I do it generating revenue. And yeah, I have more cost on my finance side. And I'm, believe me, I'm not advising everybody to go out and get the most costly financing they could find. But everybody's situation is different. We need yeah. to figure that out. We need to consider not just what's in front of our face, but all the other things that go into business. And it's tough. And that's why guys like you and me like to just put the cards on the table, have conversations with folks, figure out what's going on with them and their business, and figuring out, you know, what's the best road? What's the best thing to do? Yeah. And there's one thing too that uh, a lot of you out there, you have businesses that are sole proprietors, but a lot of you are LLCs. A lot of you are uh, inks too, you know, uh, filing as an S corps and all that. But here's the thing. If you have a company and it's a legal company, you don't have any business credit. You just don't. And that's another big thing where in our industry, when you're buying a $20 squeegee, it doesn't matter if you have business credit, but I can tell you if you're looking to build an empire, which some of us are and some of us are just looking to kind of just be our own, you know, sole proprietor, single guy, owner operator with a helper, that's cool, right? But for the guys that are really looking for building that empire, the, um, 
if I will, uh, Wesley Blooms of the industry, the guys that are just, uh, you know, just on fire headed to the top. Those are guys that are looking at then buying shops. They're looking at then financing uh, leased vehicles or purchased vehicles in the business name. They're looking at lots of big purchases that's not just equipment and they don't have business credit. So what can happen out of this is that something like a finance for business credit can actually create you to have a business score, business credit, just like a person has a credit score this is now opening up the door for your company to then potentially have a credit score. Yeah. And that's Josh is a huge point you made there. And one of the things that, um, one of the things that I'll liken it to is when I was 18 and, and I got my first credit card, which I don't know if I was 18, but you know, that's when we can legally get our first credit card. Right. Yeah. My interest rate was ridiculous. You know, I mean, it was, it was high, but you know what? I had no track record. So, of course it's high. I'm a huge risk to a bank. So if I established my, uh, my personal credit on a $500 credit line and I bought something and I paid it off and, you know, and then you grew over time, you know, whatever the case may be to the point where we just, we just, I'm in Arizona. If you guys don't know, it's 117 degrees outside right now. My air conditioner went out two weeks ago. Oof. Well, guess what? My interest rate, consumer purchase guys, my interest rate is 5.99 you know, over, over five years or whatever it is. Right. Um, well, I didn't get that when I was 18, but I have an established credit history. So to your point, business is the exact same. And if you come in with the 800 personal credit score, you still don't have business credit. And what you said, Josh, about the, the empire builders. Yeah. You better have it on point because those are the things that you're going to need to do. Um, but even our little guys, our sole props, how many of us are building this business? Josh, you have kids. I have kids. Who are you building your business for? Yeah, exactly. And pass it along. It's an asset. Exactly. And so if the business is establishing credit and you get to a point where you're passing that business on, what would happen if their personal credit can't carry all the debt needed or the things just to, just to make payroll if you needed something yeah. like that? Well, if the business's credit's established, that's a legacy bill. Because now the business carries it and your son, daughter, who you sell it to, whatever, does not have to personally come into that thing uh, and, and put up a bunch of personal capital and worry about going bankrupt doing that. The business yeah. is established. Hugely important. Good point, Josh. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's one of those things that you can't hand your actual credit to somebody, but you can hand your business credit to somebody. It comes with a business. It's building this thing. We're building these like things and names and like, our company is a thing. And to build that, there's lots of avenues to it. So there's lots of pros and cons. Now, some people are out there saying, oh, I'll never, I'll never lend. And, and you may be totally correct. And that's what you think in your head. It means it's right. It's completely up to you. Um, but uh, there are a lot of benefits that people kind of just don't get. And another thing that I know we're asked a lot is people go, well, like you said, what's the credits or what's my payments going to be? You know, what, what's the, what's the uh, interest rate and all that? That is all figured out with all of the different things that go into this. Because we, you're a broker, if you will, where there's lots of different institutions, your job is just to find the best program, best rates, best options for everybody's individual kind of needs. So there's not a blanket. You know, it could be you know, uh, $69 a month all the way up to you know, $1,000 a month if you're buying you know, a, a building or something. So there's lots of different options, and lots of different prices, but it goes off of the price of what you're borrowing equipment wise. And it also goes off the score that you're using for your credit score. Um, that kind of thing is only going to be found when you uh, apply. And when you apply for credit, doesn't mean that you're actually, you know, signing anything. You're just checking into it. That's kind of the first step. But on that same kind of part is that there's not a lot of other ones. If you go to Capital One, or whatever the other big name ones are, and you go, or like the Best Buy card. If you go to Best Buy, you only have one option, that's that card. You know, where you're using in commercial lending like we do, there's lots of different options. So there's a lot of different programs that kind of people can get into. There's different options, even in the same lenders, different options. So there's more out there, I think, than people even kind of give it credit for that they know. Well, and that's, uh, it's, it's interesting because just you, you're, the, the sales approach that, that you and I mentioned, where it's more of an education approach, that's 95% of what I do. And it, it's funny, uh, 
maybe last week, um, I ask a lot of questions and anybody who's dealt with me knows I'm asking a lot of questions. I'm not asking just to be your friend. I do want to be your friend, but I want to gather the information so I can put you in the best product. And I actually frustrated a dude a couple weeks ago was, was asking him a lot of questions to try to tailor it up and figure it out. And we do that before before we really go off to a bank, we want to, we look at, you know, we look at things that come in on the application, make a determination, but we'll do that to determine what's the best fit based on your business, your model, what you're looking to accomplish. And then we get an approval. Then we're going to go through all the options soup to nuts again with that information that we've gathered together to figure out what is the best fit for what you're trying to accomplish. And, um, that process, it sounds like a big, long process. I mean, Jersey, how many do we get where we have someone who applies, you know, uh, the night before we, they're approved in the morning and uh, they're funded in the afternoon? Oh, yeah. I mean, it can be very time. fast. Yeah, we can do it very quickly. Um, we can do it very slowly. It's up to our customers, uh, you know, and how they want to do the timeline and stuff like that. So, um, but it's a very in-depth consultative approach process because, and here's the real reason that sounds like, Oh, this, you know, the consultative approach, you know, spending all this time. No, this is selfish because the more I do on the front end to help somebody understand what, what it is and perfectly fit it to what they're trying to accomplish, the less issues I have down the road yeah. and the issues down the road are the things that will, that will cause me to not make, money and put food on the table for my family that month because I'm dealing with something that's already done. I'm of course going to deal with it, but I don't, I, I want everything. I want you, I want you to know everything. I want you to be very comfortable um, knowing exactly what you're doing. And again, if that happens to be not even going through with the financing and, and going another route, that's okay. Yeah. That's, I, you know, I, I, I may disagree with you and I'm pretty vocal about that, but I, I it, you know, it's, it's, not, it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I'm wrong or you're wrong. It means that that's the best trajectory. And if the worst case scenario is someone got a lot of more information and I learn things from my customers every day, yeah. that's really, again, that's what it's about. And that's why it's so much dang fun to, to be honest with you. I get to talk to business owners all day, every day about what they're trying to do, what they want to do, uh, questions they have, you know, questions I have, I pick people's brain all the time. This is, Pretty, pretty good life, you know. I mean, I'm, it's it's Wednesday at one o'clock, and I got a bro tank on. I, I can't. Yeah. I, I I like that you're uh, coming to this uh, with no sleeves. I like that. I like that. Hey, you're <laughs> sure, in Arizona. I don't think they. Yeah, I don't think you can wear sleeves there in Arizona. I think it's a rule. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty rough out there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, window guys in Arizona that actually take off the hours of like what is it, eleven to two. And then they start back at three just because then it's just a little bit uh, yeah, it's, right on them. Yeah, that period from about, you know, June 15th to probably August 15th-ish, um, maybe even late August. I mean, you're talking, yeah, it's it, 114, 117. That's, that's not just, we don't just say that. That's what's going on out there. And it, it can kill you. I mean, dehydration, the whole nine yards. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you just stay out of the, uh, you stay out of the sun. That's what yeah, you it's, do. it's a shock you live in Arizona and you're still so pasty. You'd think you'd right. be. Well, it's because I'm always here talking to our clients, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, and that's what the big thing about this whole, this whole kind of interview people, you know, they misconstrue that we're trying to get people to lease, but it's such a taboo word, almost like taxes that we're trying to pull the cloak off a little bit and say, okay, well, let's, let's really just look at it right now and see what it is and see if it's even an option for some people. There's a lot of people out there who may never ever need to run across it, but that's what we're doing is kind of pulling that veil off. And I'd love to hear from you uh, in the comments on YouTube. If you've ever lent for businesses, uh, just say yes, you've lent. No, you haven't. All cash, whatever. I'd love to know. It's just always interesting to me. So definitely comment on YouTube. But the other thing that people don't know when they just want to talk to someone is that I'm not really at liberty to kind of give advice for finance because I it's none of my business. We basically send off the information and that doesn't even have to come from us. It'll just put into a spreadsheet, if you will, that'll show a name and if they're approved or not. I'm not going to find out your credit score. I'm not going to find out your payment history or your credit report. I don't care. I don't need any of that. 
that's for finance, the institution, and the financial side to do. So if you ever need to talk to somebody about the finance side, Adam is always there just to talk to, kind of get a little bit, you know, I'm a little confused. I just need to talk to somebody in person. We pass a lot of stuff on to you that way. Email's huge that way too, uh, just so people can kind of get a little bit better understanding for it. And like I said, just pull the kind of veil off and, um, you know, make it a little less scary. Uh, but with that being said too, you're going to actually be at the huge convention coming up now in two weeks. You have your own booth there where people can talk to you all day, every day. Yeah. Scary stuff, right? Um, no, yeah, we got, uh, we, 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 we got our, we got our booth. We're close to, close to you guys. So, you know, hopefully we can, uh, spend more time, uh, you know, actually helping folks than, you know, shooting the breeze. But, um, yeah, we're, we're pumped up, man. We're, we're going and, and, uh, uh, we, we, we're, we're open to work with anybody, uh, you know, that needs it. And one thing, if there are folks going to the huge convention, um, there's, there's a lot of, uh, show specials and whatnot. Um, we can, we can have an approval for you prior to that makes the process that much faster. And so we're going to be working on some things like that and we can approve you on the spot too, potentially, and get you up and down on the spot too. But, um, you know, go in there with the idea and the mind frame that you're going to expand your business, whether that be with knowledge, which you're going to get a lot of that or with actual equipment, um, you know, on the equipment side, if you're thinking, Oh, okay, I got, you know, I got 2000 saved up and I can get this thing, but I really need this thing at 4,000. That's what we're there for, man. That's mm -hmm. exactly do it right. Uh, you're, you'll thank yourself down the road. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty interesting this year is that we're, we're doing a lot of the pre-approval stuff beforehand. So people are actually going to the show. And again, you don't have to, if you go and you go, man, I don't find anything I want. Don't feel as though you have to spend it. But if you got the pre-approval already in hand, now you're looking at equipment at what it does and what it does for you instead of the price. That's kind of the big thing is you're not price shopping because there's nothing worse than when somebody buys equipment they shouldn't be getting because it's cheap, you know? And I'll tell people all the time, like, I would, I would rather see you not buy anything right now and wait to save up a couple hundred dollars more and get what you need. It's the same thing with financing is don't buy something that you can afford if it's not what you want, you know, go there, see everything, meet Adam, even talk with Terry's going to be there too, the other finance guy. And it's just going to be awesome to kind of just talk in real life and kind of make this whole process not so scary. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, it's Keith that's going to be there. Keith, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can't miss him. He'll be the tallest guy at the convention, I bet. <laughs> yeah, so, which is kind of funny because we got another guy uh, with the company that's six six, and this guy just, uh, Keith just started not too long ago, and he's six seven. so our former tallest guy is not there anymore. It's a big deal. And so, what do you, you got to be what, six four, six five, something? Uh, that's what my driver's license says, and I play basketball like it, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about a good five eleven, six foot on a good day. Yeah, yeah. Well, around these other guys, you don't look like it. <laughs> uh, well, that's, you know, that's, uh, I got the lifts in my shoes. There you go. I have to say, actually, it's one of my favorite things to do is when I'm at these shows, I'm a little bit of a bigger guy in general, but, you know, people don't, uh, they, either the camera angle or something, everybody meets you the first time, they go, you're a lot taller than I thought. Or, you know, that kind of thing. So it's always kind of fun to see people in real life for that reason. So. Yeah, I had that effect first time I met you, too, because I'd seen you on a couple of the, uh, the lives in the, the nation and everything like that. And, yeah, first time I met you, I was like, hey, Jersey. It, it's camera angles. you got to be in the upper third, you know. It's, what is, so let me see here. How do I make myself? I want to make myself look taller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you do. You just, you know, you stand, you drop your shoulders back, and there you right. go. <laughs> Good stuff. Good but stuff. cool, man. Hey, I appreciate it. And if any of you guys have any other questions that we didn't answer today, uh, I know this was more of a fun kind of podcast for you guys to learn about. Even like I said, even if you never had it in the back of your brain for finance, hopefully you learned something today. Uh, hopefully, you know, things and the stigma of it kind of got off a little bit more. Hopefully you're a little bit more comfortable, but you now know names. This is Adam. You're going to meet him at the huge convention. You can call him anytime. If you're doing paperwork with us over the phone and you are financing, that's the Adam that you've uh, talked to a uh, hundred times. That's him. It's kind of nice to uh, put a face to the, uh, you know, talking to you on the phone. But thanks guys for watching in general. Um, if you have any other supplies that you want, big, small, even if you want to start the leasing process, please do give me a call. Shoot me a text, 862 312 
2026. If you have questions on the app, I can certainly put that in for you too. Super easy, takes all of 60 seconds to get the app in and then approvals come from there. There's even auto approving possible so you could get a approval within just seconds. Um, but first and foremost, let's get that app in if you need to. If you need anything, like I said, high five to all of you guys and gals out there who just say, hey, it's in my cart, it's ready. Literally, you guys are amazing, and I get texts all day. That's my phone's been ringing since we've been doing this. That's what it is. It's awesome. If you want to do that, shop at your leisure. Put it in your cart. Text me and be like, yo, Jersey, my stuff's in my cart. Here's the code. Give me my discount. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. Save it. Even if you're not buying right now, I want to be a rep. The code for the discount this week is going to be level up. Level up, man, like what Mario does. Level up is the code. Just let me know. That's going to get you 5% off an order if you place it through me and free shipping, which is super awesome sauce. So definitely, definitely take advantage of that. If you're on YouTube, like I said, please do give us a thumbs up. That means the world and comment. I love talking back and forth with everybody. Hopefully you got your tickets to the huge convention. If not, it's thehugeconvention.com. Go there, get them, or of course, call me and I can get those tickets set up for you too. So thank you to you, Adam, for taking some time out of your uh, your uh, nice cold day there to uh, talk. Very much appreciate it, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, Josh. I appreciate it, brother. Awesome, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.